Welcome to the Western Mass Fly Fisherman website. Today we're going to do a, a video on tying one of the most popular nymphs in the world, well, probably one of the best flies, and of course that is the pheasant tail. Now to tie a pheasant tail nymph, of course, what you need is you need a pheasant tail, which I have right here in my hand. Now there's, there's, there's different ways of procuring it. If you know hunters, you can ask them if they hunt pheasant, you can ask them to save you the tail feathers. However, uh, I've got a group of uh, hunters that collect tails for me, and they'll probably give me 30 to 40 tails. I'm lucky if I can use two of them. In Massachusetts, when they stock the birds, they put them in cages, and it just wrecks the tail feathers. But you're actually better off to buy them in a sport shop. And when you buy them, you're going to get, it's, it's about $5, and you're going to end up with two feathers. You're going to end up with one which is considered a center tail, and you're also going to, uh, get either a left or a right, where the fibers are usable on a left or a right. So to start with today, we're going to tie a standard pheasant tail on a size 16. We have a size 16 hooked in rice. I'm going to attach the thread in back of the eye and I'm going to wrap it all the way back. And I want exactly six fibers Create, we're going to tie in a short tail. The ribbing on this is going to be extra fine copper wire. I'm going to wrap my thread forward to about the three quarter point on the hook. I'm going to coat the uh, hook shank. A little bit of super glue. I like to use super glue, but regular head cement works fine too. I'm going to take these fibers and I'm going to wrap the body upward to the three quarter point. And tie it off. Now, when I wrap the fibers, being a right handed tire, I wrap the fibers away from me. So when I rib this with the wire, I want to counter wrap it. And I'm going to wrap the copper wire towards me. And what that does is it crisscrosses the fibers and it really reinforces the fiber so the fly won't come apart. Next, I'm gonna take these fibers and fold them back. The thorax on this fly is peacock curl. Now I have a piece of peacock curl. I'm gonna take one uh, fiber In. We're going to create a thorax, probably with about three, four wraps. Let's tie this off. To reinforce that peacock thorax, takes a few wrap of thread. Uh, takes a few wraps of thread through it. Now we're going to take our peasant tail fibers, bring it forward to create a wing cover. Now we're going to form the legs on each side. Now I happen to grab seven fibers and I only want six, so I'm going to cut out one fiber. Because what I want is I want three fibers on each side to make the fly balanced. Okay, put three on that side, three on this side. Okay, so dab a head super glue. I like to use a whip finish, but you can just put in a series of uh, jam knots. And just trim these legs for shape. Here's our finished pheasant tail limb. Now, like I say, to tie a variation, in our area, one of the first mayfly hatches, may, major mayfly hatches, is the Hendrickson. Now, another advantage to buying pheasant tail in a sport shop is you can also get pheasant tail dyed different colors. For example, for the one I'm going to use next is the dyed Hendrickson. This is pheasant tail, but it's been dyed brown. You can see it's going to be a lot darker than the regular pheasant tail. 
Uh, you can also get pheasant tails that's dyed olive, uh, dyed rusty brown, and you can also get a bleached. So you have a lot of variations to tie different nymphs. So for this particular one, we're going to tie a Hendrickson. Again, I'm using a six dot uni thread, back of the eye of the hook. Just going to wrap it all the way back. Again, we want to take six fibers. If you grab more, that's all right too, because I say we'll thin them out. Again, tie in the tail. When I tie it in, I go forward a little bit, but I also wrap these fibers back, because I want to start right at the back of the hook. I'm going to tie in our copper wire again, extra fine. Wrap your thread up to the three-quarter point. A little bit of super glue on the shank of the hook. Gonna wrap these fibers forward. This is going to make the body a lot darker, which is the color of the uh, Hendrickson nymph. Now the Hendrickson's in our area, they usually hatch somewhere in April. Uh, the earliest I've ever seen them, believe it or not, was the last week in March, and that's when we had an exceptionally warm winter. Uh, and I've, been, I've been fishing for 60 years, and I only saw it once in my life in March. So it's usually about, on the Quaybog River, uh, close to where I live, it's probably about April the 7th to the 15th. Then it starts on the way, the, the uh, Swift. Also, the uh, Westfield River, the Deerfield River, the Farmington River. Uh, Hendrickson is a very, very popular fly, and all the, in, in these river systems have this particular insect. So now that I have the body wrapped, I'm going to take and I'm going to counter wrap with my copper wire. Because I cut my legs off, I have to add them now here, it's no problem. The thorax on this, we want to use, we want to use a, uh, I like to use mahogany. This is some mahogany super fine dubbing. I'm just going to make the thorax. Take our legs, pull them over the thorax. We're going to take and we're going to fold these legs back along each side. And we'll finish off the head. There we have a Hendrickson in there. Like I say, all, most of the rivers around this area in western Massachusetts have this particular nymph. Size 14 is a good fly. Uh, you may even want to tie a size 12. Excellent nymph. The next one I'm going to tie, and it's another small one, is going to be for, to imitate the betas. Now to imitate the betas or olives in our area, we actually have two. We have a uh, the trichodotus, which hatches in the uh, spring, uh, usually in April and sometimes through May. Then we also have a smaller one in the fall. And again, this holds through, especially for the uh, Swift River, the Farmington River, a very popular fly. And for this, I'm also going to use a dark brown pheasant tail, a pheasant tail dyed brown. And again, I want to pick up six fibers. tail. Pull this back. 
take some copper wire. Wrap it up to the three quarter point. And take these fibers. A little bit of head cement or super glue on the body. Really reinforce it. And wrap this forward. Bring that down. Take our copper wire and rib it in the opposite direction. down hold that back of course on a betas the thorax would be I'm going to use a dark olive or is this called gray olive super fine dubbing it's an olive but it's got some little bit of gray mixed in it so it's a lot darker uh, tying this nymph I use the, the brown pheasant tail but if you happen to have the uh, pheasant tail dyed olive uh, that also makes a good uh, a good betas nymph Thorax. Take the pheasant tail fiber, wrap it over to form a wing cover. You want three fibers on each side. Sometimes it takes a while to get the right number. side, a little super glue on the thread, and give it a good finish. I always use a whip finish, I've been doing it for years, uh, tying commercially, but if you use, uh, you can do uh, three half hitches and they say that's as good as a whip finish. But anyways, there's a nice little beta snip, size 18. Okay, so those are basically the three uh, different pheasant tails in different colors that will imitate actually three or four different hatches in our area. Now the next fly that I'm going to tie is going to be a pheasant tail soft hackle. Now to tie a soft hackle, what we're going to have is we're going to have a hook and this is on a size, this is on a size of 14. The working thread again is I'm using a 6 aught uni. I'm going to wrap that in the back of the eye of the hook and I'm going to wrap it all the way to the hook bob. At the hook bob I'm going to take some regular pheasant tail. You can use any color you want but I'm going to use the regular pheasant tail. Uh, how many fibers you use it really doesn't matter but it's usually somewhere between 6 to 7 fibers. form a body and tie this in. This particular soft tackle, it doesn't have a tail. So I've tied in my fibers. And the fibers are going to be ribbed, so I'm going to tie in some copper wire, extra fine. Tie that in. I'm going to wrap my thread again to the three quarter point. Take some super glue. I'm going to wrap these fibers forward to create the body. And tie it off. I'm going to take my copper wire and I'm going to reverse wrap it. Again, that copper wire is crisscrossing the fiber so it really reinforces it. You could probably take four sets for this fly and the body won't come apart doing it that way. Next we're going to tie on a little bit of thorax and for this I'm going to use some hair's ear. Just 
This is Hanzia dubby. Now this particular, it's, it's actually what it is is rabbit. The thing is, we're not using an American rabbit. Uh, this, this is a pair that comes off a European rabbit and has more brown in it, more brown and gray. Uh, usually if you're gonna tie a hairs in them, that's the preferred, uh, preferred to use. I'm just gonna tie some in. I'm gonna form a little ball of thorax here. Now the next main ingredient is going to be pheasant here, I mean uh, uh, partridge. Now this here is a full partridge skin. Now it can be a little bit pricey. When you go to buy a pot, when you go to buy partridge, you can buy small packs of this. And that's all right if you're only tying a couple of flies. The trouble is when you buy a small package that's pre-selected for you, they may give you only a couple of the small feathers, a few of the mediums, and you're going to get a lot of the larger ones just to use it up. The best way to do it is to buy a whole skin. Now the, the only problem is the skin is it's, it's, it's a little bit pricey. Uh, most shops are getting somewhere between forty and fifty dollars for a, a number one partridge skin. But it, but it is well worth it because you can tie all the flies from small size twenties all the way up to big number eights or tens with this, and one skin will probably la last an average tire uh, quite a few years, probably fifteen twenty years, believe it or not, depending on how many star hackles you tie. There is another alternative that's a little bit less expensive, and what you do is you buy a saddle patch. It's called Speckled Brown. Now these used to sell for four or five dollars at one time. Well, the fly tying supply houses caught on that they can get more money for the ones that have a modeling to it because it imitates the Hungarian partridge. And of course they charge a little bit more. This one here goes probably somewhere between uh, eight and nine dollars for a particular neck like this, but you can also tie a lot of flies with it from small feathers all the way up to the larger ones. So anyways, I'm going to select a uh, partridge feather here. And about the middle of the skin. To prepare this feather, I'm going to take and I'm going to strip off all the fluff at the bottom. Just leave some fibers towards the top. I'm now going to hold it by the tip. And I'm going to take these fibers and I'm going to stroke them back. So now I have a little spear and I have that, the fibers going back. I'm going to tie this in. Next one I can use a pair of uh, hackle pliers. I'm going to take this feather and I'm going to stroke the fibers going back. That's going to angle the fibers going backwards. Sometimes they get away a little bit, but. Just hold these fibers all the way back now. form a head. Super glue on the thread. Either do three half hitches or do a split finish. And the fly is done. So now we have a pheasant tail star tackle, which is uh, an excellent fly. And these, this particular fly, I mean, you can fish it uh, 12 months out of the year and believe it or not, catch fish on it. But it is more effective when mayflies are actually hatching. Okay, there's one more fly that I want to tie. And actually, it's a dry fly tied with pheasant tail. And for this fly, we're going to imitate a fly that was invented by a fly tire, and I believe he's in Colorado, by the name of Charlie Craven. And his famous uh, midge pattern is called a mole fly. Now a mole fly is tied with CDC and the body is brown beaver. But we're going to use pheasant tail for the body. We're just going to do a little bit of variation on this. So I'm going to take my thread 
Instead of using six dot, I'm going to go down to, I mean, uh, yeah, instead of using six dot, I'm going to go to eight dot thread. A little bit finer thread. Attach this in back of the eye of the hook. And I'm going to take one CDC feather. CDC is, stands for Coup de Canard. It's a feather that comes off the preen gland of a duck. If you know duck hunters, you can ask them to save you these feathers, but if you tell them you have to find the preen gland, a lot of people don't know where the preen gland is. Well, the preen gland on a duck is on his back, towards the back of the duck. And what it is, is it's like a small pimple. And around that pimple is a bunch of these CDC feathers. Now, how many there are on a duck, it all depends how old the duck is and how big the feathers are. Um, but as a rule, you maybe get at least probably 40, 50 of these CDC feathers. So it, if you buy a package of it, there's probably feathers from at least two or three ducks in it. So we're going to take this and we're going to form a wing. I'm going to tie this in right at the eye of the hook. The length actually doesn't matter, uh, matter right now because we're going we're gonna to trim it to shape. Take my thread now, I'm going to wrap it all the way back to the bend of the hook. I'm going to take probably three or four pheasant tail fibers. Again, we want to rib this. This is probably the number one midge pattern out west. Tied in my copper wire. Put just a dab of super glue on the body just to reinforce it. Take our fibers and we're going to create a body. Reverse wrap with the copper wire. Finish this fly. So I'm going to take, take the CDC and we're going to wrap in front. It sort of stands it up a little bit. And when I tie it off, I'm going to tie it off in back of the CDC. And you can use half hitches, but I like to use a whip finish. And our fly is basically done. Trim this to, to length, probably about the length of the body. And there's our little midge. So when you fish this pattern, basically that's all you're going to see is the wing sticking up, and the body will sink into the surface film, into the uh, film surface of the water. Very effective pattern. Like I say, his original pattern was tied with brown beaver and CDC. But this is just a variation using pheasant tail. Thank you for watching our video and happy tying. <laughs>